Folks, I have no doubt in my mind, no doubt whatsoever, that January 6th was a complete ruse. It was a setup. Now, we know that the election in 2020 was close. Trump was fighting tooth and nail at the end to prove that he had won. But I really think that January 6th was designed to oust Trump for good. To make sure that he never steps foot in D.C. again, that he cannot run for office in 2024. And now it's coming out that there were warning signs. The FBI. Have you heard about this? The Norfolk memo? The FBI, the CIA, all these intelligence agencies, the D.C. police. They were warned that there could be possible violent attacks at the U.S. Capitol January 6, 2021. Now, when you see a headline like that, you know that they were all in on. They had to be. And do you see where Biden was trying to have this video suppressed? He didn't want this video of what was going on January 6th released. Video surveillance at the Capitol building. And it just said, you have to release this. You cannot keep this from the public. The public has a right to know. They have a right to see this. And when you watch this video, there are two clips of this footage. The one shows a group of people who are obviously Trump supporters just walking into the Capitol building, looking around, taking photos or video with their cell phone. And then you have the violent protesters, the quote-unquote insurrectionists, who I believe were most likely FBI, CIA, or Democrat operatives. They had to be. Because if you go back to any Trump rally, if you talk to any Trump supporter, or if you had talked to any Trump supporter in 2020, they were against all these violent protests in these big cities, the looting, the rioting. They have always backed law enforcement. They've backed the blue, the military. They love this country. And I'll tell you something else. You know that clip of the guy carrying the Confederate battle flag in the rotunda? I will trust him any day of the week over the D.C. police, the FBI, the CIA, and members of Congress, and even people in the media. Because at least with him, I know what I'm getting. But I would trust the guy carrying the Confederate battle flag in the rotunda over any of these idiots who work in D.C. any day of the week. So if you go to the Washington Post, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's Sunday night. This is the Cultural Confederacy. And I really want to hammer this issue of January 6th for this month, for January. For January 2022. Because we need to get to the bottom of this. And I love this country. I believe that we need to preserve our history and culture as Americans. And any time that there is a threat to that, we need to stop it. But we can't be lying to the American public. The American public deserve to know the truth about what happened on January 6th. Is it so hard for you at the FBI, the CIA, the Pentagon... Members of the media just come out and say, yeah, you know, we hate Trump so much, we went ahead and came up with this scheme for January 6th. We hired some Democrat operatives to make it look like they were fighting with police. We let them break windows that need to be replaced anyways at the U.S. Capitol. That's how much we hate Trump. I would have a lot more respect for you if you did that. Instead of hiding behind these articles or these reports, the Norfolk memo, that, oh, we have this intelligence, this as you're going to see here in just a few minutes here, I believe it's at this NBC article, cascade of intelligence, cascade of warnings from uh, or regarding January 6th. But they didn't have a cascade of warnings before. But all of a sudden, they had a cascade of this intelligence or these warnings about Trump and his supporters January 6th, who have always supported law enforcement and the military and love this country. So at the Washington Post, and if you like the video, click that like button, subscribe, hit me up on Instagram at hashtag Jason Composes, leave comments below. Now you can reach me at Twitter, Culture Confederacy at Twitter. And I'm going to read this to you cold, so please bear with me. But this is at the Washington Post. And this is an article that came out on October 31st, Halloween of all days, of last year, 2021. And there was an article at NBC that came out in April of last year. But this is all now starting to come to the surface, starting to sprout legs. 
So the title of the article, Red Flags, as Trump propelled his supporters to Washington, law enforcement agencies failed to heed mounting warnings about violence on January 6th. The head of intelligence at D.C.'s Homeland Security Office was growing desperate. For days, Donald Harvin and his team had spotted increasing signs that supporters of President Donald Trump were planning violence when Congress met to formalize the Electoral College vote. Where is your evidence of this? They talk about all these discussions that took place online, yet they don't name uh, where these discussions took place. I believe they said something like Reddit. So maybe they named one or two of these uh, message boards where people were planning this quote-unquote violent protest or insurrection. But where's your evidence of this? But federal law enforcement agencies did not seem to share his sense of urgency. On Saturday, January 2nd, he picked up the phone and called his counterpart in San Francisco, waking Mike Cena before dawn. Cena listened with alarm. The Northern California Intelligence Office he commanded had also been inundated with police threats, or pardon me, political threats, not police threats, but political threats, as I said, I'm reading to this uh, to you cold. Political threats flagged by social media companies, several involving plans to disrupt the joint session or hurt lawmakers on January 6th. Wouldn't it be great, though, if these police had threatened these protesters? You come in here and you cause any violence, we're going to knock a couple of heads together. That's what we need to have happen. So these people learn not to attack the Capitol. If you're really concerned about the Capitol being attacked, you should say, hey, you come here and try this crap, we're going to knock a few heads together. Guaranteed you do that, those people are going to hit the road. He organized an unusual call for all the nation's regional homeland security offices, known as fusion centers, to find out what others were seeing. Cena expected a couple dozen people to get on the line that Monday, but then the number of callers hit 100, then 200, then nearly 300, and officials from nearly all 80 regions, uh, pardon me, all 80 regions from New York to Guam logged on. Guam? I didn't know there was going to be an attack in Guam, so why is Guam calling you? In the 20 years since the country had created fusion centers in response to the attacks of September 11, 2001, see, January 6th is equivalent to 9-11. Cena could remember a moment like this. For the first time from coast to coast, the centers were blinking red. The hour, date, and location of concern was the same. 1 p.m., the U.S. Capitol, January 6th. Harbin asked his counterparts to share what they were seeing. Within minutes, an avalanche of new tips began streaming in. And there were no tips that came in beforehand? Self-styled militias and other extremist groups in the Northeast were circulating radio frequencies to use near the Capitol. In the Midwest, men with violent criminal histories were discussing plans to travel to Washington with weapons. What are the names of these white supremacist organizations? Was it the Proud Boys? A certain chapter of the KKK? Somewhere in the Midwest? Just so you know, the place where I saw the most Confederate battle flags was Northern California. Just thought you might like to know that. And who are these people with these, these men with violent criminal past? What are their names? None of that is mentioned here. And eventually, if I were to take a look at the report, they wouldn't have the names of these people either. Forty-eight hours before the attack, Harbin began pressing every alarm button he could. He invited the Federal Bureau of Investigations, the Department of Homeland Security, Military Intelligence Services, and other agencies to see the information in real time as his team collected it. He took another extreme step. Get this. He asked the city's health department to convene a call on D.C. area hospitals and urge them to prepare for a mass casualty event. Empty your emergency rooms, he said, and stock up your blood banks. So in other words, you were trying to instill fear in these local hospitals for a possible attack that you really had shaky evidence about to begin with. And in the end, as it turns out, you ignored all these warning signs. And you ignored them because in reality, you were in on the scam, this scheme to get rid of Trump. And don't tell me you weren't FBI, CIA, Pentagon, members of the media. Everybody knows it. You're not willing to admit to it. Nobody wants to admit to it. 
Harvin was one of numerous people inside and outside of government who alerted authorities to the growing likelihood of deadly violence on January 6th, according to a Washington Post investigation, which found a cascade of previously undisclosed warnings preceded the attack on the Capitol. Alerts were raised by local officials, FBI informants, social media companies, former national security officials, researchers, lawmakers, and tipsters. New documents and first-hand accounts show. They do mention tipsters, but they don't mention civilians. It's all these tech companies. Oh, I don't know, like Google and, should I say it, YouTube? The FBI, former national security officials, researchers. What are researchers doing involving themselves in a case that involves intelligence? So this is at the Washington Post. It's kind of a lengthy article. So let's go to NBCnews.com. And this came out April 14th last year, 2021. Capitol Police ignored intelligence warnings ahead of January 6th riots. Watchdog report finds. The agency also lacked necessary policies and procedures, leaving them unprepared to deal with the deadly attack. Inspector General report found. Of course, they have the picture here of the seize the insurrection. These protesters, these Trump supporters, violently fighting with police. The Capitol Police ignored critical intelligence ahead of the January 6th, right? I wonder why, including overlooking a warning that, quote, Congress itself is the target, according to an internal watchdog report obtained by NBC News. The police force tasked with protecting the U.S. Capitol also lacked policies and procedures that left them severely unprepared to deal with the deadly insurrection. The 104-page report prepared by the Capitol Police Inspector General found. The report has not been made public. Now all these findings are starting to come out, or I believe this report is coming out. So that was what the big to-do was when I saw this uh, headline the other night at Fox News, or on Fox News when I was at work doing the overnight show. The findings offer a devastating account of the Capitol Police preparation ahead of and response to the deadly attack that unfolded on January 6th when a crowd of supporters of then-President Donald Trump descended on the building to try to stop the certification of President Joe Biden's election victory. What was not a deadly attack? There was only one person who died. That was Ashley Babbitt, who was shot by a Capitol Police officer who has a somewhat questionable history. We'll just put it that way. The report also makes several recommendations about how the Capitol Police can be better prepared in the future, responding to reports, or the the report later Wednesday, or that Wednesday, that the Capitol Police said it agreed with the recommendations, but also suggested it lacks, quote, the time and resources needed to implement them. Why aren't you prepared? Why weren't you prepared for this protest? You're not trained in D.C. to deal with these Rallies or or these violent protests, there are rallies all the time in D.C. People march on Washington all the time. And you mean to tell me that you at the D.C. police, the FBI, the CIA, you weren't prepared for January 6, 2021? Who are you fooling? NBC News reviewed the report on Wednesday ahead of a public hearing on Thursday before a House administration subcommittee to discuss its findings. The watchdog's findings were first reported by the New York Times. Perhaps its most damning finding, the inspector general found that the Capitol Police's intelligence unit warned three days before the riot that supporters of Trump, who believe his false claims that the 2020 election had been stolen. How do you know those are false claims? Did you guys bother investigating any of this at NBC News or the FBI, CIA? No, because you want to stick with the narrative. It can't enter your mind. Your small, your pea brain mind can't comprehend the fact that, yes, there could have possibly been some irregularities with the election, which you should have been investigating. But you didn't want to do that because you don't like Trump. Here's an idea. Why don't you do what's in the best interest of the American people because we pay your salary to do what's in the best interest of the American people because that's your job. Put your political leanings aside and do what we hired you to do or what you were hired to do, which is work for the American people. 
Unlike previous post-election protests, the targets of the pro-Trump supporters are not necessarily the counter-protesters as they were previously, but rather Congress itself is the target on the 6th, a January 3rd threat assessment said, according to the report. Let's go to Salon.com. And Salon kind of mirrors what was at the Washington Post, which I read earlier. Red flags were everywhere. Bombshell report finds Trump administration ignored January 6th warnings. Okay, so now the Trump administration uh, ignored these warnings. How about this? How about the FBI, the CIA, D.C. police knew that there was going to be a crowd there, but they didn't want to do anything about it, that maybe they instigated the violence, you think? That's what I'm thinking. I, I think they instigated the violence, personally. They were part of it. As I said, part of the ruse, part of the scheme. So now they're going to blame this on the Trump, in this article, blame this on the Trump administration. Blame Trump for your own failures as a government agency who's been dysfunctional since day one. A new report from the Washington Post published on Sunday detailed a deep dive into the extensive warnings that the federal government received of uh, potential violence and efforts to interfere with Congress's counting of the Electoral College votes on January 6th. I think there's a, a grammatical error there. Despite this ample foreshadowing, the administration and law enforcement agencies were still unable or unwilling to prepare adequate defenses to keep the mob from storming the Capitol that day. Let me read that again. Despite this ample foreshadowing, the administration and law enforcement agencies were still unable or unwilling to prepare adequate defenses to keep the mob from storming the Capitol that day. Now, yes, Trump at the time was the president. But he only has so much control over certain agencies. The D.C. police are actually separate from the president. The D.C. police are more of a local government agency. Well, they are a local government agency hired by the city, not by the president. They're they're hired by, they work for the city of D.C., District of Columbia. The FBI in particular comes off looking inept, if not driven by politically inspired cowardice or indifference. Quote, the FBI received numerous warnings about January 6th, but felt many of the threatening statements were aspirational and could not be pursued. The report found in one tip on December 20th, a caller told, uh, I wonder what the name of the caller is. A caller told the Bureau that Trump supporters were making plans online for violence against lawmakers in Washington including a threat against Senator Mitt Romney, Republican Utah. The agency concluded the information did not merit further investigation and closed the case within 48 hours. Now, I know that you're going to have anonymous tipsters. I understand that. But it's just like what happened with Russian collusion, or this Russian collusion story. Some guy told another guy who told another guy that told another guy that he saw Trump talk to this person or Trump associate talk to that person. And it may have happened in Russia, could have happened at the Russian Tea Room, if the Russian Tea Room was still open at that time. It happened somewhere, but they can't confirm it. But this guy heard what that guy heard, or that guy is confirming something that somebody else said because he heard it from somebody else. It all gets really confusing, folks. Really gets really, uh, it gets really confusing. And it's meant to be confusing. Because remember, this was all to oust Trump. If they couldn't do it one way, they were going to do it another. Don't you love politics? Donald Harbin, the head of intelligence at the Homeland Security Office in Washington, D.C., did raise the alarm according to the report. It explained how he organized an unusual call for all the nation's regional Homeland Security offices, a call joined by hundreds of officials sharing their concerns. They're reportedly warning of an attack on January 6th at 1 p.m. at the U.S. Capitol, just when the insurrection occurred. Now, where were these officials from the FBI, the CIA, the Pentagon, Homeland Security, when you had all these violent protests in all these major cities? Now, granted, these cities are in these different states, and you're dealing with uh, states' rights uh, or the power of the states to handle whatever uh, the riot is in that particular city, or rather, it's supposed to be handled at the city level, uh, the riot in that city or that town. 
I'll give you that. But when you have a wave of protest at these different or in these different cities across the country in 2020, where was the FBI? Where was the CIA? Nowhere to be found. Well, we just need to give them room to loot and riot. Let them get them out of, out of their system. But then you go and you put Kyle Rittenhouse on trial and you call him a white supremacist with no evidence to back it up. And here this poor guy was trying to go to uh, to this town in Wisconsin. Now, now uh, escape me where he was, uh, uh, Kenosha, to protect property because he, his father lived there and he actually worked in Kenosha. So he had an interest in that town. He goes there to defend his town. And he's called the white supremacist for defending property in his town and defending himself from harm. To hell with all of you people at the FBI, the CIA, you Democrat operatives, you people in the media. To hell with every single one of you. So they were reporting a warning of attack on January 6th at 1 p.m. at the U.S. Capitol just when the insurrection occurred. The planning was happening all over social media. After all, inspired by then-President Donald Trump, his own tweets and rhetoric, Harbin reached out to the FBI and, FBI and other agencies to warn them of what was coming, the report found. Like I said, I'm reading this to you cold, so thanks for bearing with me. He feared a, quote, mass casualty event, according to the Post, while the public may have been surprised by what happened on January 6th, the makings of the insurrection have been spotted at every level from one side of the country to the other. It said the red flags were everywhere. And yet you did nothing about it. You did nothing about it because you were part of the ruse, part of the scheme. And I'm going to keep hammering at, hammering at this uh, issue of January 6th this whole month. Do a whole series of videos about January 6th because I love this country. I'm just a regular guy out here, but I love this country. And my taxes pay for your salary at the FBI, at the CIA. And I think it's time, and I said it before, that we just get rid of D.C. It's time to ditch D.C., ditch these political parties. You guys have done more damage to this country. Let us handle things in our own backyard. We don't need you in our business every day of the week. Every minute of the day, every hour of the day, we do not need you in our business. So butt out and do your job that you were hired to do. Either do the job you're hired to do, or we're going to ditch your ass. And you guys can fend for yourselves in D.C. and you political parties can go fend for yourselves or you can go jump off a bridge as far as I'm concerned. Like I said, you've done nothing to make this a better country. So if you enjoyed this video, please click that like button, subscribe, hit me up on Instagram at hashtag Jason Composes, leave comments below. Now you can reach me at Twitter, Cultural Confederacy at Twitter. And thank you for letting me wade my way through these articles, reading them to you, like I said, cold. And I'm enjoying doing these videos for you, and I love doing this series. Let me know what you think about January 6th in the comments section below. Do you think that it was a ruse? Do you think that this is all set up? Who is to ultimately blame for this? I mean, if they had warnings about this, they should have followed through with it. And I want names, damn it. I want names of who these... Uh, people were who were making these threats. I want to know what the name of the organization was, what chapter, if it was the CIA, uh, the, the KKK, if it was the Proud Boys, I was going to say what chapter the CIA. Yeah, and that too. If you know of anybody who was involved in the CIA who was part of the scheme, let me know in the comment section below because I'm calling all your asses out because that's the right thing to do if we're going to get to the bottom of what happened January 6th. Let's be honest. No BS, folks. Be honest about what happened. So this is the Culture Confederacy saying peace out. Stay safe, everybody. God bless this great country, and I'll catch you next time.